understand. Thank you, Senator. Now we yep. have Senator King. Thank you, Senator. I, th I think before we go into this discussion, we should acknowledge, given the mandate of our committee, the incredible potential breakthrough at Lawrence Livermore National Labs this weekend, uh, if, where there was a net uh, production of energy from nuclear fusion. Uh, two things about that. Number one, this could be uh, literally world-changing in the most profound way. Number two, it came about at one of our national labs, funded through the United States government and the activities of this committee. I think that's something uh, we should recognize and, and celebrate. If I could add one more thing to that so I don't take away from your time at all. I'd had a chance to go to ITER in southern France, and it is unbelievable. But what this 37 nations are all involved in this, and we are part of it. This could, this could unleash the ability that uh, people who are in disagreement will have to find other reasons to fight a war other than energy. And, and it's just unbelievable what it's going to unleash. And we've seen the major, it's a 500 megawatt fusion, it's just, it's, you're seeing the concept. They have a full production. It'll be a, it'll be a production as far as a, on, on a grand scale, not just as far as in theory, at smaller scales. So we're moving in the right direction. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Boudreau, uh, uh, under the uh, infrastructure bill, there was uh, funding for uh, transportation support for national parks and uh, some of the, uh, the, back, the backlog of maintenance. That's good. I appreciate that. What bothered me is the administration's budget for maintenance in the national parks was inadequate. Uh, the general rule of thumb is 2 to 4 percent of capital value for maintenance every year. I think the budget this year is about 1 percent. That's not an indictment of this administration. That's been the pattern for the past 25 or 30 years. That's how we got into this hole. This committee and the Congress worked very hard on the, on the Great American Outdoors Act to tackle the, the, the maintenance backlog, but it's pretty frustrating to see that we're still digging the hole. So I hope you'll take back to the department the, uh, the point that uh, we can't expect Congress to come to the rescue of the maintenance backlog every four or five years if indeed the budget is inadequate and makes the hole deeper every four or five years. Do you, you take yeah. my point? No, thank you. And thank you for uh, your leadership and partnership on these issues. I will definitely take that back, including to, uh, to OMB. Uh, another provision of the bill which has been discussed, the chairman discussed, is capping wells. How are you prioritizing where we cap? And, and for example, methane is the low-hanging fruit of climate change. To what extent are we prioritizing capping wells where there are methane leaks? Thank you. Uh, again, this is one of the most exciting uh, programs that we have under the bipartisan infrastructure law. And so uh, we have prioritized getting initial funding grants out to uh, all of the states in order to address high priority wells. Um, and we've also uh, put forward guidance and are implementing additional state level grants in order to provide uh, those investments around high priority wells. And one of the uh, aspects of the guidelines is addressing uh, legacy um, emissions, uh, including methane emissions and other forms of pollution. So there wells. is an effort being made to, uh, to prioritize. Absolutely. And states like New Mexico, believe me, they know uh, the problem wells. Now, uh, another area of increased funding has been in the uh, Inflation Reduction Act for staffing at the national parks. And uh, I'm, I wanted to inquire if the department is is moving toward implementation. Senator Daines and I have called for 23,000 FTEs at the national parks because we're having a huge increase in visitation. And in fact, we have lower staffing than we had 15 years ago, 10 or 15 years ago. Do you have a hiring plan? Uh, and will, be, will you be able to get to the 23,000 figure in the reasonably foreseeable future? Yeah, and thank you, and thank you again for these investments. And the Park Service has developed uh, internal guidance and hiring plan directed towards this summer. You know, as you know, Senator um, 
you know, the largest demand period uh, and largest stress on our national parks is during the summer season. Last summer, we had four million people at Acadia National Park in yeah. Maine. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so part of our strategy to take advantage of these resources is focused on seasonal hiring uh, in the coming year. And the Park Service uh, has developed guidance uh, disseminated to the parks uh, for exactly that purpose. Final question. This came up in one of our earlier uh, hearings. Uh, there's some money allocated in the Inflation Reduction Act for developing solar projects over canals, over waterways, which has a double benefit because a lot of the problem in the West is caused by evaporation. And if you have solar panels resting on top of the water surface, you can generate electricity and avoid excessive evaporation. Any update on the utilization of those funds? And yeah, and again, project? this is part of what's exciting about the legislation is that type of innovation. So there's about $25 million right. uh, devoted to exactly this. And we're working through uh, design, study, and implementation for po pilot projects to demonstrate uh, precisely the benefits that uh, you described. And so, uh, yes, we're uh, taking advantage of that funding and uh, identifying the pilot projects. Thank you. Finally, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to share a couple of charts with my friend, the Senator from Wyoming, on inflation uh, that indicates that, yes, indeed, federal spending contributes about one-tenth of one percent of the inflation, according to Moody's analytics, and also a comparison of our inflation rate to those of other OECD company, countries, which shows virtually identical, which indicates that it's hard to argue that <clears throat> spending in our Congress has caused inflation that's happening in France, Japan, and South Korea. Thank you. I'll, I think ours is those down to, to seven one. I'll, I'll pass those on to Senator Barrasso for his edification. <laughs> well, the chair.